Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'll be going over chest tubes. I want you to be familiar with how to manage a chest tube for bedside nursing. So I will capture how the chest tubes work, reasons for use and nursing safety. Don't forget to access the free quiz on link down below. My name is Christina, nurse practitioner. Let's get started. So chest tubes are used to remove fluid or air to help re-expand the lung for patients that have maybe a pleural effusion where there is a buildup of fluid from the lining of the chest or a pneumothorax, which is air that enters the space between the lungs and the chest wall, or it could be from an infection referred to as an emphyema or a hemothorax, which is blood that collects within your lungs and chest wall. So let's get familiar anatomically with the anatomy of the lungs so you're more comfortable with it. So this includes your visceral visceral pleura, which is the lining around the lung, then it's your pleural space that contains serous fluid. Next is your parietal pleura. The visceral pleura and parietal pleura glide against one another, creating that negative pressure. When air enters or fluid such as blood, it makes it difficult for movement to occur, so it creates this pressure and does not allow for adequate air exchange, making it difficult to breathe. So your patient will complain of shortness of breath, pain around the chest that is described as a sharp pain, or maybe even a cough. So your assessment findings will likely include like a diminished breath sound because of the ineffective air exchange, possibly decreased oxygen saturation with an increase in respiratory rate because of the difficulty to breathe, so they have to work harder to breathe. So let's say this patient has a pleural effusion, so a chest tube will be placed. Placement is approximately at the fourth or fifth intercostal space, which is the anterior axillary line. After placement, a chest x-ray is always completed to confirm placement and reviewed by the ordering doctor. So now let's get familiar with the chest tubes and what everything means that is important for you. So let's begin with the chambers of the chest tube. So there are three sections. So looking at the photo, there are two systems, wet versus dry, and it will be described on chamber number three, the wet version. However, chamber number one is on your right hand side. This is called the collection chamber where drainage from the patient's pleural space is removed. As you can see above the collection chamber is a port with a suction that is coming from the patient. Now drainage must be monitored hourly for the first 24 hours after chest tube placement then per hospital protocol guidelines. However, at any time, if you have bright red blood or drainage of 100 mils per hour, you must notify the covering provider. For chamber number two, this is your water seal chamber. This prevents air going back to the patient. Below the water seal chamber is your air leak monitor where it should have two centimeters of water, which is that pretty blue water, to prevent air from returning back to the patient's chest. So remember, this should be checked every shift, minimum, and replaced and documented per manufacturer's guidelines. What you do not want with the air leak monitor is to see excessive bubbling. It could indicate an air leak that would need to be reported immediately to the healthcare provider. However, what does it mean if there is no bubbling? It may indicate a kink tubing or the air has been removed from the pleural space and it's done its job. Chamber number three, this is your suction setup. This is where it varies wet versus dry. So your dry setup has a dial that controls the amount of prescribed suction by the ordering provider. Usually it is like negative 20 centimeters of water and will be activated by the suction port. Above that, it is connected to a suction device. How you know it is working below is a dial monitor is a ballow that looks like an orange accordion. It will expand out when it is on and patent. Moving on to your wet setup. In chamber number three, you must feel the suction control to the desired pressure level and gentle bubbling will be noted. This must be monitored throughout the shift and filled with sterile water as prescribed. With these wet chest tubes, you wanna be more cautious because they can tip over and spill. And so last, I want to highlight some tips for you to remember. So before handoff, I want you to make sure you verify the settings by reviewing the order. Some doctors will just come in, they'll say, hey, can you put the chest tube to, um, to water seal, meaning off to suction. However, they, they forget to write the order and then the change of shift nurse will come in and then it's not reflected on there, so just make sure it's current. Also, always keep the drain um, to gravity and free of kinks, and then never, ever, ever milk or strip a chest tube. It's not recommended because it increases the negative pressure in the intrathoracic cavity. 
So when doing your dressing changes, it should be done every shift or as needed. Always look at the access site for signs and symptoms of infection. Or you also wanna make sure if there's any like any open holes around the tube or near the insertion site, this means that the tube may not be in the appropriate place. It has to be um, notified to your healthcare provider. Another tip, you wanna assess for crackling of the skin known as crepitus or subcutaneous emphysema per textbook. They just call it crepitus. But you should notify your healthcare providing of these findings. This could indicate that there may be a small air leak that um, is in the subcutaneous tissue and based on the surgeon's discretion, the chest tube may need to be adjusted. Again, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for upcoming notifications. Take care.